Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming swatches of the BH Back to Brazil palette. It's the one that the website says has five new shades in it, which means they must have one before that only has 30 shades, as this palette has 35 shades. It's supposed to be a mixture of matte, satins, shimmers, to me, eyeshadows are normally just mattes and shimmers, so we will see what it means by satin. I haven't opened this yet, but it's supposed to be really colourful. The colours are supposed to be taken from all the colours of the, car the carnivals and things in Brazil. So we shall see. It's got this nice kind of sleeve to protect the case. Oh good, at least it's got this on the packaging, because some you just get the kind of case with the nice packaging on. But no, the palette is. It's quite a reasonable size too for 35 shadows, I think. I think this would be good for something you could kind of take around with you and create loads and loads of looks with. This palette is a very reasonable price. I got it for £20 off Beauty Bay. In America, I believe you can get it on the BH website for $13.50, something like that, $13.00 which is a really good price for 35 shadows. Now I hope the quality isn't diminished because of the price. So let's open this bad boy up. Ooh. It does have a mirror, which I'm quite happy about, but also look at those shades. I'm so excited to play. I'm definitely gonna have to film a look with this shortly, but today we will just be doing the swatches. And we will pop the colours flat on each lid, dry and then wet, to kind of see how the shadows stick and what the pigmentation is like. But yeah, I'm excited. There's a couple of highlighters here and a black shadow as well, by the looks of it here, to deepen up any kind of looks you'd want to do. But yeah, what we'll do is we will try these out as well on the face. So if you guys want to have a look at these swatches, see how these shadows perform, then keep watching. So first I'm going to take that pale pink shade in this top left corner here with my number 7 eye colour brush. I'm going to use this brush for trying all of the pigments out on my eyes. Oh, so this is quite a nice baby pink. It's not showing up so well dry. So there's no primer on my eyes or anything like that. I've just set it with powder like I did the rest of my face. And it's not sticking funny, it doesn't look patchy to me, it does look very nice, so we shall try it wet. I don't know if this is showing up more. I don't feel like this is completely matte, I feel like I can see a little bit of shimmer in it, but it's still a really pretty baby pink. I don't feel like wetting the brush does help too much. So I am cleaning my brush between each eyeshadow and resetting my lid with face powder just to make sure that the shadows have their best chance. So next I'm going to try this colour. I definitely feel like this shadow is more powdery. If you can see, I press my brush in equally hard on both of them and you have a bit more of the kind of powdery fallout with this colour. Okay, so let's pop it on the lid dry. Ooh. This one is a touch more of a hot kind of pink colour. It's between that hot pink and baby pink. And I think it's showing up a lot more. This is really pretty. This is a really nice pretty kind of pink. It doesn't go on patchy. It's really nice and smooth. So we're going to see how it applies wet. Yes, I can see much more of a difference applying this wet than I could with the lash shadow. It is really beautiful and really pigmented when you apply it wet. So I do feel like these colours are staining the lid a touch, so do be aware of that. Next I'm going to go into this colour here. In the pan, this colour had less fallout than the colour before it. I would say that went on the smoothest of all of them when dry, and probably the most pigmented dry. It does look really beautiful, and it doesn't wear patchy like the others. It's a really nice kind of hot pink that one might go in really nice with a valentine's day look for next year now i'm going to apply it wet i feel like this is kind of smoothing the color out i feel like the last shade had much more of a pop when applied wet but i do like this color i think it's a really nice fun kind of girly color i feel like this would suit a lot of eye looks 
I'm now going in with this colour. To me, these two colours look very similar. This is popping. I did reset my eyes with the powder, but to me this is wearing a touch patchy. I don't know if you can see. But I don't know if that's to do with how dry my eyelids are or to do with the pigment. So I think I'll apply a little bit more and we shall see. I feel like building it up more helped, but I feel like you have to be very careful with a dry eyelid because my eyelid hasn't gotten too dry yet, but I still feel like it can cling a touch to the dry patches a bit more than the rest. Now that is popping. I feel like wetting the brush really makes this colour pop too. I feel like it smooths it out so much more. It just looks so beautiful on the eyewear. I think I could wear this so often, even though the colour is very bright. It's just really lovely, really lovely wear. I think it's my favourite so far. Now on that last shadow, I do feel like I was wiping away a little bit of fallout from my cheek, which does happen. It wasn't too noticeably visible, but I just thought I would put it out there that there is a touch of fallout with some of these colours. So next we are going into this colour right here. Personally, I think this colour is very similar to the last couple of colours. I don't really see much of a change. I'm not sure that you need all of these kind of pink colours in this palette. I think you could pick two or three and be set. I'm not 100% that you need all of them. So let's pop some colour on this lid. Now as beautiful as this applies and as beautiful as I think it looks, I think it looks very similar to the last one. Don't think you need both in this palette. I think it's a bit of a bulk kind of thing. But that colour has fully stained this lid. This colour, this lid, is now pink. So if you're looking for a lid stain, I found one. So I'm going to dip into this colour next. So I feel like dry, this one went on the most pigmented. I think it's a really nice kind of pinky purpley colour. I do really like the colour. I think it looks really beautiful on the lid. But let's see how it looks wet. That hasn't popped that much. I feel like this was one of the smoothest eyeshadows I had applied dry. But I feel like it's also now getting everywhere <laughs> because of how bright the colour is now that it's wet i don't see that much difference i think you could apply it dry and i think you would get a similar outcome i don't know that you need to add water to this next i'm going to dip into this color with my studio eyes brush because the other brush that i was using uh, i had to thoroughly wash because it was getting stained as my eye was with the other products so I'm just going to wait for it to dry out and then move on to maybe the next eye with it when we come to that. So this one looks to be kind of nice brownie red colour. I like the colour. I do. It's not very pigmented dry at all. I think wet this will be nice. Really nice kind of brick red. I'm really into it. This shadow is far better wet. I'm really enjoying the colour, it's not looking patchy at all. I like it, I really do like it. I think it's a really nice kind of unique colour in this palette. I don't see any other of the same shade which is nice and I think it kind of fits with their theme that they have going on. I'm going to dip into this colour here and apply it all over the lid. I think this one is supposed to be one of the satin ones that the box mentions it doesn't look quite as matte as some of the other shades in the pan but this one is far more pigmented to me than many of the other shades I've seen in there I almost get what it means by satin it's got a little bit of shine to it when it's wet but like it has a touch of the glitter to be honest and I actually really like that colour that is definitely going to be used in a look shortly. I think it's really beautiful and warm. It's like a chocolatey brownie ready colour and I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's my favourite colour. So I think I'm going to take the yellows in this order and then move on to the oranges. 
that way. So the next colour I'm going to dip into will probably be this one. I don't even see it. Don't see any colour at all on the lid with that that shade. None at all. And I took quite a bit. So let's see if any colour shows up when I wet the eyeshadow. I think this barely gives a yellow kind of look at all to the lid. I think this colour is a bit of a dud. Perhaps it's just my palette, but I don't think this colour works at all. So next I'm going to pop into this colour here. To me it looks very similar to that colour. There's a touch of a difference in the pattern. That one's slightly darker, but I wouldn't say by much. This one is showing up better. I don't feel like it's showing up like super bright. But I don't know how much I anticipated that after the last shadow, to be honest. I feel like this is actually showing up, so I am pretty pleased. It does have a bit more of a, like a bright yellow pop. It's very much an Easter colour. I think this will complete a lot of Easter looks. This is better. This is Easter on your lid. It's definitely a bright pop of yellow. It's definitely far, far more visible than the other one. I like it. I like it. Like I said, it screams Easter to me. The next shade I'm going to pop into is this colour here. This colour seems very similar to the last colour to me. It's a beautiful colour, but to me it's exactly the same. No, not much difference. Like it looks basically the same. I feel like you don't need both colours in this pan. The next shade we're going to try is this one. Oh, this is a really nice kind of neon orangey colour. Like the other shadows, you do have to kind of dip into the pan a few times to get enough product, I feel, to cover the lid with colour. Although, again, I'm still powdering my eye. I feel like it's getting patchy because of how dry my eye is. It's not sticking very well down here. I think it'll definitely wear much better wear and you'll get a bit more of that neon. But I feel like it's still got quite a nice kind of vibrancy. Oh, that pop though. That is nice. Bright orange is what I wanted it to be. Wet. As I'm going through this palette, the colours, the colours are everything I want them to be when they're wet. And I feel like you still have to take quite a lot of product to, to get the pigment you want. I've wet it and it is still patchy on the lid. So around here it's thin, but especially there's like a bald spot here. And then it sticks a bit more here. I think, don't get me wrong, I think it's partially to do with the dry skin on the lid, but I still feel like if you have dry lids, then this is going to look patchy on you. So I think next we'll, we'll pop, we will pop into this shade here. Looks a bit more of a dark burnt orange. So this is looking really nice as well. It's not quite as neon as the other colour, which is nice. I think you do get a bit more of that nice burnt orange kind of look. Which is going to be nice if you don't want something too bright, but you do want that pop of orange. It is quite nice, dry actually, quite pigmented, but you can still see a bit of the eyelid through the shadow. I, I like it. You're still getting a little bit of fallout under here. I can tell this isn't supposed to be one of the matte ones. On the lid wet, it's just, it's glittery and it's lovely. And you can definitely see the kind of true colour it's supposed to be now. Definitely more of that burnt orange kind of colour. But like with the other colours, you do need a couple of dips to kind of build it up the entire lid. But it is really beautiful. It's not patchy. It's going on really well and I think it's lovely. And I think if you're after some kind of burnt orange kind of look, this colour would be really nice for you to maybe pop like an orange glitter over the top. I think that would look really beautiful. 
yeah, I definitely really like this colour. I wouldn't necessarily say it's my favourite, but then orange I wouldn't say is my favourite colour. But I think it's really nice and well pigmented, and it's a really beautiful shadow in this collection. I feel like it's less neon than the other colours, so it is quite different, but it should be. They look fairly different in the pans. It does look far darker in the pan than it shows up on the lid. However, it's still a beautiful colour. So the next colour we are going to go for is this one. This is definitely, in my opinion, supposed to be one of the more glittery shades. Oh, this is pretty. Uh, dry, it's definitely looking quite thin. You can still see the base colour to it. You can see that it's supposed to be more glittery. However, there isn't that bright pop of glitter. If you're looking for something properly, majorly glittery dry, this isn't it. Something more like the Makeup Revolution pigments are definitely kind of more what you'd be looking for. Ooh. That would be a nice golden caramelly kind of colour. I think that would be really nice in autumn. That would be a beautiful autumn colour. That is lovely. That is that is the glittery shade that I think has been the most kind of true glittery shade we've seen so far. I don't know about all this matte satin rubbish that they're on about. But the colours are nice and to me this is one of the better glittery colours in this palette. I believe that my favourite kind of reddy brown shade was also supposed to be a glittery shade. I didn't see as much glitter in that as I do in this one. Next, I think we're going to go into this colour. I feel like these glittery shadows are far more crumbly, but then they have a bit of a better pigment payoff. I think the dry pigment is okay. I think you can still see the glitter, but I think it appears on my viewfinder a little bit more patchy than it's looking in real life. That is beautiful. That is what I wanted from this shadow. Beautiful greeny gold. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it. So the next colour we are going to dip into is this lovely pale green up here. I think what we've gathered from this palette so far is the shimmers are far more pigmented than the mattes, but the mattes do work if you wet them. And I think this is definitely kind of proof here, these lighter colours, like that light yellow, but you couldn't see it. This, you can see it but it's not massively pigmented dry. I feel like it comes across a bit patchy dry. This is like a neon green. And I don't know, I'm not liking it that much wet to be honest. I feel like I'm having to work with it too much to get it to what I want it to be. I feel like if I'm brushing over to try and bring pigment up here, I feel like it's wiping away the pigment on the lid. Not a massive fan. Don't know that I'll be dipping into that shade that much. So the next shadow we're going to try is this one right here. So what I like about the greens is I feel like in the pattern they all look fairly different. Now on the lid it may be a different story. I feel like this one is showing up a bit better than the previous colour. I feel like I could totally get away with using this dry. It does look really nice. It's kind of like a pale pale green it's nice i prefer it much more than the kind of neony shade that we had before a little bit of difference nowhere near the difference that we have with the shimmers i think the shimmers respond far better i feel like it deepens it a bit the pigment is a little bit more there would i say it makes a hell of a difference not particularly so next we're going to try this green kind of colour. This one is coming off a bit more pigmented. However, because of how thin it's looking on the eye, it's coming off lighter than it appears in the pan. That is showing up far darker and far more pigmented when wet. 
And I think my eye is leaking, which is why this shadow has kind of leaked all the way down here. But I think this colour is far prettier. Wet. I feel like I wet the brush a little bit too much and now it's starting to smudge everywhere. However, it is far more beautiful. Definitely, definitely more bright and kind of a true green. It's lovely. But I think for the next eye we're going to have to move on. Because have you seen that? That's not looking good. So the next colour that we're going to dip into is this shimmery green here. That is a lovely, lovely glittery mint green colour green colour. This is going to be nice for like springtime looks I feel like. I feel like with this shade wet the glitter is popping a little bit more but I don't know that the colour is more pigmented. I feel like it's almost as beautiful dry as it is wet but really nice for the spring. I think that's going to create some really nice looks. So next we're going to pop into this lovely colour down here. I feel like this shadow is fairly pigmented, like all of the other shimmers, and I feel like dry is going on rather well. The shimmer is still standing out when dry. I feel like when you turn your head to and fro with the light, it still catches fairly well. I feel like wet is filling in some of those spots. I feel like if you have a really dry eyelid, wet is the way to go. I feel like it's showing up a little bit more, the pigment's a bit clearer. I'm liking it. It's one of those shades that I'm like, do I hate green? Do I really? And I look at that and I'm thinking, probably not as much as I thought I did. It's gorgeous. It would look better, I think, maybe over one of the matte shadows, just to give it a bit of a stronger base. But apart from that, I'm really pleased with it. I really do like this colour. So next I think I'm going to dip into this shade here. This is a really nice light aqua blue. I don't feel like I have to dip into this shade quite as much to get a full lid of pigment. I've done one dip and this is what we have. I like it. It looks a bit patchy on the screen so I think if I took a second dip and kind of built up the areas where it's a little bit thinner it looks really pretty. I definitely think wet adds pop and I think it makes the colour a bit more opaque on the lid. It deepens it a touch but it's a true aqua blue now. This is absolutely beautiful wet and dry. I would wear it both actually. Having the shadow wet makes it more opaque but it's a lovely beautiful colour. I definitely think I will wear this more often. So next we are going to dip into this shade here. This looks to be a lovely kind of turquoise shade. It has that green bit, it has that blue. I think you need a little bit more of this shade than you did the last to get a full colour. It's a beautiful turquoise shade. I'm really liking it. I think you need a couple of dips and it's quite pretty over the lid. I think it will be really nice though wet. Oh, that is really nice. It's definitely looking like one of those satin shadows. This hasn't applied patchy, it looks really beautiful. I think, you know those mermaid looks that people are always going on about? I think this would be the perfect colour for that. It is really, really nice and a proper lovely greeny blue turquoise colour. So next we're going to pop into this colour here. In the pan, this looks like a really beautiful forest green colour. And I think it translates a little paler, but not super pale. So it's a really nice beautiful forest green. I think the dark colours come across a lot better dry on the lid. But I think this is going to really pop wet. I feel like this one is harder to blend across the eyelid wet. I feel like it's sticking wherever you place it. And it is really hard to blend wet. However, I think the colour wet is really pretty but then if you work too quickly you end up with a Samaria mess like I have. However, I like the colour. 
I think the colour wet is very nice, however, I've applied this one wet quite badly and it looks a little bit of a smeary mess. Next, we're going to pop into this colour here. This shadow is very powdery in the pan. However, it's one of those glitter shadows that translates really beautifully on the lid. I think this looks really nice. I do think the green staining may be helping a touch. However, it's a really nice, beautiful shimmery shade. It translates really nice dry. I think it's just a subtle shimmer dry and I think I would definitely use this. I feel like it has the opacity that not many of the other shadows do. Wet, I feel like this shimmer pops a touch more. I don't feel like the opacity is improved with this one wet. I just feel like the shimmer pops a touch more. So I think I would wear this wet or dry really depending on what I was going for. If I wanted that shimmer quite bright, I'd definitely wet this colour. Next, we're going to move into these last two rows with the dark blues and purples. So we're going to hit this colour next. I feel like this translates fairly pale in comparison to what you see in the pan but it's a step up from the aqua blue and not too dark. I feel like you need quite a bit of this colour for it to translate properly and not look patchy because I don't know how that this is quite as blendable, it doesn't spread quite as far as some of the other colours, but I like it, I like it. Okay, so wet it has a touch more opacity, I wouldn't say it's quite as opaque as many of the colours are wet, wet or dry I don't think there is much of a difference with this shadow. So next we're going to dip into this shadow here. I honestly don't see that much of a colour difference between these three shadows. They're probably, one's probably matte, one's probably shimmer and one's probably satin, that's what I'm thinking it is going to be. I feel like there's not much opacity to this one. I feel like you get more of a like deep blue tint to the eye, not really a true colour. I don't think dry it's that good. I feel like it comes across a touch on the patchy side. I feel like dry is not the nicest shadow in the world. So it has some kind of sheen now but I think that's just from the setting spray that I use to wet the brush. It's not very opaque. I think it's quite a pale blue. I feel like you can still see a lot of my lid coming through. If you want something very understated, then perhaps this would be the colour for you. I think if you're quite afraid to play with bright colours, then that colour would work. However, I don't think it's a truly opaque colour, wet or dry. So next we're going to dip into this shadow. So this looks quite glittery in the pan and comes out quite pigmented. So this is very pigmented dry, I don't feel like it goes on patchy, I feel like perhaps I should have put a bit more on down there, but it looks fairly even. It does look really nice, it's a really nice deep blue. I don't see much of the glitter that I see in the pan though, so perhaps that will be show more when it's wet. I think the glitter is more prominent now, not super glittery. This also looks deeper, obviously once you've wet it, it comes across very deep. So this definitely has a quite a different look wet or dry and I think depending on the look you want it depends on whether you wear this wet or dry. So the next shade we're going to dip into is this one here. This one also looks glittery but much deeper more like a navy blue. So this dry is going on fairly light. It's still definitely visible and I think you can still see a bit of the glitter in this one dry but then I'm definitely looking for it. But this one doesn't look much deeper dry. I feel like this looks like the shade of the other one wet when dry. I don't know. I'm hoping I'll like it wet, but it doesn't stand out to me that much dry. This one, like most of the bottom ones on the other row, seems to be the, um, the glittery shadows that the palette mentions. That is pretty wet. It has this beautiful sheen, the glitter is there. Like I said, I definitely think it's supposed to be glittery in line with the other shadows on that row. I am loving this colour. It's a really nice kind of deep, deep blue. I wouldn't say navy like I initially thought in the pan. But it's really deep, kind of midnight blue, sparkly. 
it's really beautiful, really beautiful wet. I definitely recommend trying this one wet. Dry doesn't do it just. So next we're going to pop into this purpley shade here. What I like about the purpley shades in this palette is they all look fairly different from each other. There isn't one where I would say there's already one of those in the palette. Whereas I feel like the blues definitely have that similarity about them that this doesn't have. Ooh. So this isn't a lavender, but it's a nice kind of paley purple. It comes across really nice and pale on the lid. I think if you wanted a light wash purple, this would be it. I have a feeling wet, this is going to be quite dark. Oh, I was wrong. It just adds to the opacity of the colour and makes it a little bit more bright. Almost has a fuchsia element to it. I kind of see a bit of pink in there. That's a really nice, cool purple tone. I think that's really nice. I think I don't have a lot of purples in my collection and this is definitely something I'd like to start working with. So next I'm going to dip into this blue here. It does look very similar, like I said before, to these shades here so I don't expect there to be that much difference. Well this is going to be that shade that has absolutely no payoff, isn't it? This is not going on very well. It's patchy. I feel like that's what's left of the last shadow. I did clean my brush but it just doesn't look good. It feels like there's no colour payoff whatsoever and it just doesn't look very nice. Well that's nice actually. I think the only way to get colour with this pigment is wet. It is a really nice pretty kind of royal blue when wet. However, you definitely have to wet the brush to get any colour payoff whatsoever. It is a beautiful colour and it does show up really nicely when wet, but you do have to work quite hard with it to make sure it's not patchy. I don't know. I feel like there are other pretty colours in this palette that you could go for. I feel like this isn't absolutely necessary and it feels fairly similar to some of the blues we've seen previously. So next, we're going to take this deep purpley colour here. I think as my eyes starting to dry out, it's getting a little patchy. But then this purple seems to me very similar to the last one. It doesn't seem much darker. I think wet, it will translate better as a darker colour. But otherwise, I'm not seeing it that well. So this definitely translates wet as a much darker purple colour. I feel like it's not as opaque as some of the other colours, but it is a really nice kind of beautiful deep purpley shade. I feel like if you wet your brush and then waited it for, to dry for a touch and then applied this shadow, it may go on a little bit better. So next we're going to try this colour and then there's only one black left. Now in the pan, this doesn't look as glittery as the, ones, the other ones on the bottom. This shadow is also not showing up very well. It just kind of looks like my lid has been very stained rather than slightly stained. It's very pale, almost a lavender colour. Doesn't look that way in the pan, but I think this is a very light kind of wash of colour, even wet. So I think if that's what you're looking for, then this is definitely the shadow that will work for you. But if not, there are other shadows in here that I think would work better than this one. And finally for the shadows, we're going to try the black shadow at the bottom. This brush is stained. It's not a true black, but then it's going on dry and fairly thin. So it's not an ultra pigmented black. And then my dry lid is going on a touch patchy. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice colour, but on my dry lid it's ultra patchy. There are other blacks in my collection that I would probably use over this. I don't think wet helps with the patchiness at all. I think it helps with the opacity of the colour, but not so much with the patchiness. I managed to get this all over my eye, I look like I've been punched. I don't think this has helped the wetness, I feel like it's a bit more opaque 
but that's kind of it and I feel like I definitely have other shadows in my collection that are more opaque dry and I would probably use those over this. So although I already have highlighter on, I've started kind of highlighting above my brow bones and I think that's what I'm going to try each of these highlights for. So I'm going to pop this one above my left brow and I'm going to pop this one above my right brow. So it's very subtle and I can see it very lightly when I turn my head into the light. It doesn't look like much in the pattern but it's a very nice subtle highlight. Also a very nice subtle highlight. I think I prefer this one to this one just because I feel like it gives a bit more natural sheen. This one feels a touch chalkier but they're both fairly pretty. I think I would use both again but I would definitely go for that one more. I feel like that blends a little bit better on my skin. So I'm going to wet the highlight on the right and kind of top up my highlight with it. So pretty. Really beautiful. I would, I would wear it. I would wear that highlight again. So that's it for the palette. I actually really like it. I think it's missing your kind of flat shade that you pop over your lid after your primer and the transition shade. It has most of the shades in there that you need. I think it would pair well with a neutrals kind of palette so that you could create a kind of smoky eye with a pop of colour if you wanted. I think this is the palette though that you can get nearly every colour that you would want in here. I think there are quite a few disappointing shades but there are also some really nice beautiful shades as well. And I would say for £20 it's worth the money. I think you get enough of good enough of the good shadows for it to be worth it. If you like these kind of videos then please give this video a thumbs up and if you enjoy my videos and want to see more then you can subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload. Thank you for watching.